Hello and welcome to Evaluate This. I'm Andrew Fryer and in this short screencast I'm going to show you how to set up remote desktop services in Windows Server 2012. In an earlier screencast I set up a virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI, and as a result of that I've got a lot of moving parts already in place. For example, I have a web access server where users can connect, I have a connection broker handling permissions and what's available in my environment, and I created a remote desktop virtualization host with a pool of VDI machines ready to be used. In this screencast, I'm going to add in a session host, and as you can see when I hover over this, it's greyed out. What you don't do is right click on this, nothing's going to happen. You have to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, and select the Remote Desktop Services Installation option. Because I've already done some of this work, my broker is identified here, and I'm going for a standard deployment. I've already set up VDI, so this option is greyed out. I'm going for the session-based desktop deployment, remote desktop services or terminal services back in the day to give it its old name. I get to see which roles are going to be deployed. And because I've already got a broker, it's identified here, as is my web access server. What I need to do is identify my session hosts, and I've got RDSH here and RDSH2. These are both virtual machines, and I can use virtual machines in Windows Server 2012 because we can put so much grunt into a virtual machine now, e.g. 64 logical processors. I'm warned that I might need to restart them, and I now hit deploy. Great, that's now succeeded. If I go back into my remote desktop services overview now, you'll see that my session host is still grey, but it's connected by a solid line and goes blue when I hover over it. And that means that I can do the next bit, which is to create something called a session collection. I'll just call it session collection. I'll use both of my hosts. I'll remove my default group and add in a special group I've created called Camp RDS users, the users who can get into remote desktop services. This is something new for Windows Server 2012, user profile disks, which means that I can have a virtual disk for each of my users and in that disk their profile and state can be saved, thus enabling them to configure their session and get the same session when they log back in again. I've got a share for this so that both of my session hosts can see it. That's all I need to do, I can just hit create. That succeeded, but notice I've got some warnings here. And these relate to the changes I need to make to group policy on both of my session hosts to enable things like automatic reconnection for our users and for them to be able to redirect playback so they get a really good flash experience from their remote desktops. You can now see my session host is down here, but what does that all look like for the user? Well, if I sign on as me, because I'm a member of both the VDI group and the RDS group, I actually get both kinds of desktops. And you can see my new session collection here, so I'll log in. And here's my desktop. Now I've already been in here and I've configured it so that my desktop is set to red and my store is on the top left hand corner of the screen. I just want to do a couple of things to move a few things around over here. I'm going to go into my desktop and just quickly change the desktop colour background from this awful red to a nice dark blue. And the reason I want to do that is if I just come out and connect back in again, my settings will obviously be saved for me. And what's going on there is if I go into my remote desktop user disk store that I created earlier, you can see that individual users have logged in and get their own disk here. The final piece of the puzzle was introduced in Windows Server 2008 R2 and is the ability to publish remote app programs or RD remote app. And this means that rather than giving our users a desktop, we just give them an individual application. So I'm going to do that now. This is now crawling through my servers to see what's installed on them that I can offer out. And I've got SQL Server Management Studio installed on here, so I'm going to give that to my users. Close. And before I go in and have a look at it, I'm just going to edit its properties. 
because here under user assignment, I could make it further restricted to who can see it. And I'm going to just give this to my good friend Simon because I know how much he loves SQL Server. I'd also be able to set file type associations in here. So if Simon clicks on a SQL script, for example, it'll automatically open Management Studio for him. So let's log in as Simon. And you can see he's got SQL Server Management Studio set up just for him, but he hasn't got the rest of the stuff. And that's opened up SQL Server Management Studio to all intents and purposes, looking like it's running on Simon's desktop, but actually it's running on my remote desktop session host. And that means that we can put powerful applications up on our servers and if people can connect into them from say Windows 8 RT devices they can actually run these tools from those machines. So that's a very quick introduction to remote desktop services. If you want to try some of this stuff for yourself please download Windows Server 2012 from the link below. I've been Andrew Fryer, thank you very much for listening.